Hello everyone. This is a final project presentation video, and today my topic is the recovery of the three-dimensional shape of an object from a single wheel. First, I will give you an introduction about three-dimensional recovery. It is the process to recover the original shape of an image using one or zero graphic photos. The technology plays an important role in various fields, such as computed tomography, face recognition, game programming, and etc. Traditionally, people tend to do the three-dimensional recover using multiple images, which decrease the level of difficulty significantly. However, there is a need for us to recover three-dimensional image using single picture, and that is our topic uh, where the project to work on. For the three-dimensional recovery, the most difficult task is to find out the missing depth information using the limit values provided by the two-dimensional image. And to solve this problem, we use a famous downhill algorithm and the minimization constraints to generate a correct three-dimensional photo. To think about how can we solve this problem, we will notice that there is a brightness value for each pixel for the original two-dimensional image which describes the color information, or let's use another word, the lightness information. And with this, we can recover the depth value. From this image, we can see the center of the image is the brightest, and it becomes darker when it goes further, which means the center of the image has a high Z value, which is to 255, while the external arrow of the image has a low Z value. Okay, now let's introduce about the famous downhill algorithm. This is a kind of pro propagation approach, which selects the brightest point as a start point and propagate recursively into its eight directions to update depth information according to the neighborhood points. The rotation will continue until the whole image complete. In this algorithm, the depth of initial point is fixed. It will It will find the minimal downhill direction and compute the corresponding head z value using these two functions. You may see from here, uh, t stands for the recursive times and phi stands for directions. Here is the self evaluation mechanism, which use zero constraints rules to check whether this three-dimensional reconstruction has a correct result. There are some restrictions on the generation of surface for three-dimensional image, which can be used to improve the correctness of the algorithm. Here we use brightness constraints, smoothness constraints, and also integrability constraints. Now I will give you some detailed introduction about these constraints rules. For brightness constraints, it compares the differences between the reflectance map of the original two-dimensional image and the measured intensity of the reconstructed three-dimensional image. For the smoothness constraints, it is built on the assumption that 
the surface of the recovery image should be smooth, and the pixel value will increase or decrease slowly along any direction from a specific point. Also, the surface should, shouldn't intersect with itself. Finally, for the integrability constraints, it evaluates the correctness from the perspective of global consistency of the synthetic three-dimensional image. Based on the minimization restraints, it is possible to generate an error score for each constraint. If the error score exceeds the threshold, the result of recovery may have errors. To test the correctness of this algorithm, I select four synthetic two-dimensional images, namely width, face, sphere, and halogen. Here are the testing results of the four objects. A is the original two-dimensional image. B is the front evaluation view of the three-dimensional three image. And C is the lateral view of the three-dimensional image. OK. Now I will pr present you a demo of using uh, this three-dimensional construction software. This software is developed uh, in the environment of Visual Studio 2012, and the language we used is 3++. This, this software import the OpenGL library, which is used to draw the three-dimensional image. And first of all, let's try some simple image, like this one, the sphere. As you may see, this is one two-dimensional image. And uh, here we can get the reconstruction results of this sphere. And it is just like what we expected, uh, which have a fairly good result. OK, and uh, let's try on another photo, the width. From here, you may see the three-dimensional image of a width. It is, it is just like uh, the one we used in the real life, so this one ha also have a really good performance. Now let's try some complicated images, like this one, the human face, and also this one, the halogen. As you may see, this image is a lot more complicated because it has plenty of edges. And uh, unfortunately, this one cannot gain a really good performance. But it is still acceptable, because you can still image this herlogon image from the three-dimensional reconstruction result. And finally, let's try the most complicated one, the human's face. Here you can see the contour of the human's face. And if you see from this angle, you can see his eyes, his cheeks, and also his nose. which has a fairly good performance. In conclusion, the algorithm realized the goal of three-dimensional recovery. 
However, we should still consider that this cell heavily rely on pixel brightness and lightning. And also, this cell can only be implemented on the recovery of simple image. If you provide a photo like a room or a house and want to recover it, it will provide a bad result. Okay, thank you so much for listening to my presentation and that's all.